Mata Nasrullah. When is the help of Allah going to come? As human beings, we are driven crazy by uncertainty and the lack of closure, not knowing when it's all going to end. When is the day of judgment? If we all knew when our lives would expire, how different would our lives be, right? We would know exactly when to run a little faster, when, just like with any other race, right? When to pace ourselves in a certain way, and then when to make that final sprint. But we don't know. Mata, you have absolutely no idea. And that requires a tawakkul that is very different because you have to submit the need to know when. You have to submit the idea of closure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can't do that unless you have certainty in the destination. Now I wanted to actually speak about this verse tonight or today because it has a meaningful connotation to the historical context that it's placed in that I think is often lost upon us as we are reading through it. It shows up in Surah Al-Baqarah. Am an jannah? Do you think you will enter into Jannah? Do you think you will enter into Paradise? And then you hear of those that came before you and how they were struck with al baqsa which is suffering. And some of the Mufassirun say it refers specifically to Al-Faqr, to poverty here. They were struck with their health. All types of external hardship and internal hardship, both of them connected to one another. And the fears that shook them. They were shaking. There was such a level of fear that overtook them and uncertainty. Until it got to the point that the Messenger of Allah and the believers with him said, When is the help of Allah going to come? Verily, the help of Allah is nearby, it's close to you. What is the historical context of this verse? And I want us to situate ourselves in it for a moment and think about how we would feel. You know, it's convenient for us to read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ now and say, I wish I could have been there in Badr and Uhud and Khandaq. I would have certainly been on the side of the Prophet ﷺ. I would have strove. I would have never fled the battlefield. I would have never been dissuaded by the hypocrites. I would have been able to overcome all of the pressures. I would have stood firm with the Prophet ﷺ. The reality is, it's hard to know that. It's hard to know that. And Allah places us at our times and places for reasons that are not known to us. But this verse, dear brothers and sisters, according to the majority of Fasirun, came in regards to Khandaq, the battle of Khandaq. So let me give you what that historical context is like for a moment. 25 to 30 days completely under siege by the largest army that the Arabs have ever seen in their existence. You are under siege from all directions by an army that has shown its willingness to mutilate you because this is coming off of the heels of Uhud where they showed their cruelty and they have surrounded you from all directions and they intend to not leave anyone alive by the end of this. Every direction is surrounded and all you have is the strategy that you've never tried before of a ditch that's been built where each person has to watch every single part of the trench to make sure that it's not penetrated by that large army. One mishap, one opening means the end of everyone in Medina because they can all make it through that one opening if that one opening fails. So the pressure of everyone that's having to watch the opening you have people on the inside that you know now have betrayed you and that are coordinating with the outside. You're hungry. You have a shortage of food and supplies. The people ran out of food. Think about that. They don't have food anymore and they don't have the time to make food or to make their way so that they can have those supplies prepared for themselves. The Messenger of Allah stomach is bloated out of starvation. And he has two stones tied to his stomach. How do you sleep at night? It's cold at night. People are malnourished. They're afraid. And on top of that, you have the demoralizing hypocrites on the inside that are saying, Ma wa illa 
SubhanAllah, I mean, I can't imagine hearing those words in those moments. There are people on the inside that said, Allah and His Messenger promised us nothing but delusion. This whole thing was delusion. We should not have done this. We should not have taken Him in. We knew this was going to happen. Some of us told you. But you went to Mecca and you brought Him here, and the only thing He promised you was what? Jannah. That's all He promised you. He didn't promise you anything but paradise as a result of taking him in alayhi salatu wasalam and committing yourself to this message. And collectively they're under siege, they're hearing demoralizing messages. How do you sleep at night with all of these factors? You're shook. You don't know when it's going to end. And there is an army that intends to commit genocide. SubhanAllah, there are people in the world that live in similar situations of hardship under siege. Think about our brothers and sisters in Yemen. Will they die out of hunger? May Allah make it easy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Yemen and all over the world. I know I just mentioned Yemen, if I start to go down the list of Gaza, and all the different places under siege, with shortage of supplies, with disease, all these things, it's so hard, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the situation of that desperation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, lifted that siege. Of course, gave the Muslims victory. The collective end of the believers is وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That victory belongs to the believers. Some people will die in the process, some people will struggle, some people will go through all sorts of oppression and will succumb to the oppression of this world. But what is the message that the ayah starts off with? أَمْ حَسِبِتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ you made a claim that you want paradise. You centered Jannah in your pursuit. This life was going to be full of all sorts of surprises and difficulties along the way of that pursuit of goodness. Jannah is surrounded by, by thorns and hardships. It's going to be difficult. And know that the help of Allah is with your patience. My beloved brothers and sisters, the question, when will the help of Allah come, is one that resonates deeply with many who face trials and hardships. In Islam, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign of His mercy and wisdom, and it comes at the right time for those who trust in Him. We are reminded in the Quran, indeed the help of Allah is near. This teaches us that even when situations seem dire, a believer should maintain faith and patience as Allah's plan is perfect. One of the key lessons from Islamic teachings is the importance of perseverance through difficult times. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam faced immense challenges during his life, yet he never gave up hope in Allah's help. His reliance on Allah in times of need is an example for all Muslims. We encouraged to run, to turn to Allah in prayer, seek forgiveness and continuously strive to remain steadfast, knowing that Allah's assistance will arrive when the time is right. Moreover, the help of Allah often manifests in ways we may not immediately recognize. Sometimes the delay in relief is a means of building our character, strengthening our faith or guiding us to a better path. As believers, trusting in Allah's wisdom and timing helps us stay resilient, knowing that every difficulty is accompanied by ease and that Allah's help is always near for those who are patient and trusting in Him. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.